How's it going everybody? This is Radish Head and welcome back to another episode of Upland Analysis. Well, look at this. We've got the full New York map. It looks very impressive, I think, of course, with the recent addition of Queens towards the east side. And with that, the final piece of the New York puzzle is complete. I did say in my preparing for Queens video that the stress test was bound to be the stressiest stress test of all time because it was held before the full release and it was in very high demand areas of Queens and I said if they can handle this then I think it bodes well for the full launch of the city and I was right the stress test was excellent I know there was a couple of minor issues but overall, I was certainly able to click and things were responsive and I could mint properties and it was pretty prompt. And that seems to hold over for the real release as well. Again, I heard there were some minor issues that were affecting like specific properties. But on the whole, wow, I don't think I've experienced a release that smooth since Chicago. And that was quite a few months ago now. So um, it's really good that Upland is clearly doing a lot of work on the back end and uh, making those developments to make sure that our gameplay experience is as smooth as possible. Before I go any further, I just want to give a quick thank you to my executive level channel members, Bad Frog, Matringo and Monopoly Mike. Thank you so much for your continued support. Now this video is all about how I did in Queens, how I'm sort of feeling about my collections, do I feel like those predictions have held up, and um, general strategy in that brief period between the city being released and the collections being revealed and beyond. So let's talk about my minting experience and I'd love to hear about your experiences minting in Queens um, in the comments below and of course in the Club Radish Discord server. I'm always on there chatting to people. Um, the link is in the description below for that. So when the hammer dropped and uh, you know we're at 8 a.m pacific time, where was I? Well I was stressing is what I was doing because my block explorer was floating along Kew Gardens here and it had been for the past like 20-30 minutes and um, I was just watching my block explorer trail sort of disappear out of Kew Gardens. I was like, oh, if the release had come like five minutes earlier, I would have been able to grab loads of stuff. But thankfully, my explorer, by the time the release opened, was right here on Queen's Avenue and the tail was just barely in the corner of Kew Gardens. So I had a choice to make, Queen's Boulevard or Kew Gardens. And the thing which really tipped me over the edge was that these Queen's Avenue properties, they were all marked. So what I did, my explorer is literally here. I went bam, 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 bam. Four marked Queen's Boulevard properties immediately. Then I quickly scrolled down here my tail was still just barely in Kew Gardens and I just managed to grab this one on the end here which I've actually since sold. I've sort of um, sold a couple of properties around here just to recoup some of my funds but yeah I managed to grab this one then I sent to it and I went bam 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 bam. Grabbed all of these this entire corner of Kew Gardens grabbed these grabbed this. I knew it was going to sell out pretty quick and I don't think I was like the only person in this corner of Kew Gardens because I scrolled along because I was like, why am I able to get all these? Like, uh, have I <laughs> have I misclicked? Am I in the wrong neighborhood? But no, everybody was like down like the south side of Kew Gardens minting up. Nobody had noticed that I was up here minting stuff, I don't think. So that was really cool. Um, I think I managed to grab 15 properties in Kew Gardens, um, of which I've sold like two or three. So uh, that's pretty good. I'm feeling confident about Kew Gardens. Um, there's not that many neighbourhoods in Queens that uh, are small enough to be exclusive collections. I'm sure that Upland are going to have some exclusive neighbourhoods and Kew Gardens is a really good candidate. I'll tell you another really good candidate and I feel like a fool because I completely neglected it. It was like one of the top comments of my predictions video. Why wasn't I talking about Rockaway? 
Um, and I'll be honest, I kind of didn't appreciate how important this area was to the history of Queens. When I saw it on the map, I was like, oh, it's like a wannabe city island, but it's way too big and it looks kind of... I don't know, I just wasn't inspired by it. Um, I quite liked this bit in the middle, but I, but I, the broad channel, but I, I totally neglected this. And I was like, well, if... If anything was going to be popular, I guess Rockaway Beach, because it's got a cool sounding name. But uh, yeah, it's turned out that this has become quite a hot area, uh, Rockaway Beach, and especially Rockaway Beach Boulevard. As I said, there's not that many neighbourhoods which are small enough to be exclusive collections. And a couple of the ones which are, are down here in Rockaway. So Rockaway Beach, Bell Harbour... Um, definitely this one on the end here, ne Neponzit. Although that one doesn't sound that inspiring, <laughs> to be honest. So I'm not, I'm not convinced. But you never know. Um, so yeah, anybody that managed to grab stuff down there, like congratulations, you saw something which I didn't. Um, it will, will be interesting to see if that works out in terms of the collections. But that's enough of that. So I grabbed stuff on Queens Boulevard went down to Kew Gardens, and then I was satisfied I'd grabbed what I could in Kew Gardens, and I raced on over to Long Island City and Astoria, because everybody knows they were like the top places. And to be honest, I was thinking, oh, you know, I've probably left it too late. There's not going to be anything there. Well, actually, I was uh, I was quite surprised by just how much there was unminted. Um, until I started clicking on properties, at which point I realised exactly why they were um, unminted. It's because Long Island City... Sorry, I've been calling it City Islands this whole video. Long Island City is very expensive. But I did manage to send to a property um, where there was a bunch of stuff for about 20k. So I was like, okay, that seems like a win. Um, you know, it's a popular neighbourhood. People just aren't willing to pay like 100k for a property. I'll grab some 20k ones. Then I used similar logic in Astoria. So I sent over, uh, I managed to grab some small properties down here. I think this 31st Avenue, like, I'm not saying it's going to be a collection necessarily, but I've noticed that this 31st Avenue has like a lot of restaurants and stuff on it. So I don't know, like maybe it won't be a collection, but certainly within like Astoria, it seems to be one of the like more well-known streets. So it could be a good place for a racetrack. I don't know. Um, but yeah, so that was it. So Queens Boulevard down to Kew Gardens across to Long Island City and Astoria. Then I was like, OK, OK, I'm quite happy with how I'm doing here. I'm not done yet. So I was like, yes, Glen Oaks. This is where I want to go. Um, so I zoomed in on over here and I was like, OK, this is probably all gone already. It's a tiny neighbourhood. It's like the only neighbourhood which has a potential of being a rare as far as I'm concerned, because it's got like 200 properties in it. Of course, all of these small ones were gone. But you know what? These these properties weren't <laughs> there's they're surround this 260th street surrounding the glen oaks oval none of them were minted and i was like okay do i want to spend 500,000 upics minting a massive property in glen oaks the answer as you can tell by this big blue blob here was yes but it tore me apart <laughs> and I was racing for this oval because not only is it the most reasonably priced of the five, it was also, you know, the middle. So everyone wants that. Uh, congratulations to David Walker, who I believe grabbed that one. Yes, very good. Um, so, yeah, um, I'm quite happy with my performance there. And that was pretty much it for the, you know, the the start of the mint when everyone was racing around. Um, I did have a look, you know, on Rockaway at this point, but it was already, um, like, pretty much all gone. So I sort of moved on to the next part of my plan, which was, OK, I've managed to grab stuff on some of the key streets, key neighbourhoods. Let me start grabbing up some really nice, cheap properties. That was my next plan. Oh yeah, and also Junction Boulevard, because I heard people talking about that before, so I managed to grab some Junction Boulevards. And while I was there, I was like, hey, some of these properties are like 
really cheap. This is the cheapest property I think I've ever minted. This one here on Corona, 2,400 Upix. For a non-FSA property, that's ridiculously cheap. Yeah, like I might have minted something cheaper in Brooklyn for FSA back when I started, but uh, yeah, you can't get much cheaper than uh, 2.4K. And that sort of inspired me, and I went a little bit mad, but I, I headed over to um, East Elmhurst, and this was basically the rest of my evening, was... Um, scrolling around like this bit of the map and picking up a bunch of the cheapest stuff I could find. <laughs> These are all properties that were selling for um, about 4.4, 4.6, 4.8k Upix. There's still a few of them around, but I literally just sent my explorer here and just clicked on every individual property. I was like, is that 4.6? No, it's 5. So I was floating around just trying to grab the absolute best value stuff. And I must have minted about 60 of them. Uh, so that really kind of... Um, that was basically the rest of my Upix. Because I didn't want to spend every single penny that I had. I wanted to keep an eye out for, you know, some good deals elsewhere. Um, but yeah, that was basically my Queen's experience. And I tried to um, embrace a lot of the strategy that I share on this channel. Um, in terms of the, the locations I went to first. Um, the fact that I didn't spend all of my money in one place, like when I went over to City Islands, I didn't just stay there and mint all the City Islands. I went from there to Astoria to Glen Oaks. Um, yeah, I sort of jumped around and that's um, something which I always encourage people to do. I managed to grab three uh, cheapish properties in Flushing, uh, I managed to grab some cheap ish stuff in Holliswood, which by the way, um, if you're looking for like a quick tip, um, Holliswood is also one of the few neighbourhoods which I believe could be an exclusive collection purely based on the um, the number of properties available in the neighbourhood. And I don't know if many people have noticed it yet. So um, there's still a few reasonably priced properties to mint over in Holliswood. So come on over and grab a couple if you want to speculate with me that it could be something. It does have the curvy roads, which as I've said always seems to indicate the nice part of town. So uh, yeah, give it a go, Holliswood. So that was me during the release and um, kind of in this period between the release and the collection reveal, I'm gonna be slowly selling some of my properties in some of these areas, um, like Kew Gardens, like maybe one on uh, Queens Boulevard, maybe a couple in Long Island City, um, because I think I can get a pretty good markup on them. And even though I might be able to get more if they turn out to be a collection, it's better to recoup some of your costs in case they don't turn out to be a collection. Like I'm not like an all-in kind of guy. I want to be winning no matter what happens. I want to hedge my bets. So um, if I end up selling, I don't know, five of my Kew Gardens, make the money back that I spent minting them, and then I can hold on to the rest, I feel like I've won regardless of whether it's a collection or not. So that's one of my main tips from this video is don't be afraid to sell your stuff before the collection reveal because because sometimes it could be better to make a little bit less money now but mitigating that risk that you uh, haven't actually hit a collection area when you thought you had because nobody truly knows what Upland is thinking including Upland themselves sometimes, I think. That's my uh, my top tip is please do not be afraid to uh, sell a few of your things to make your money back because you're going to be very sad if you put all your eggs in one basket and it just doesn't work out and then you're stuck having to sell a bunch of properties for under mint because suddenly you've got to wait for the city to mint out a bit more. Speaking of minting out a bit more, that is my second strategy which I want to be talking about for this video is, as I kind of alluded to, I minted dozens of properties in Queens at the very floor. If you have some Upix to spare and you are still located in Queens after the release, or even if you don't have some Upix to spare, quite frankly, and you want to uh, flip some of your potential collection properties, because I just want to say those properties which I flipped in Kew Gardens, the revenue that I made from that went straight into this strategy, which I'm about to detail right here. If I zoom out, you'll see that if I click properties nearby, the cheapest property you can buy in Queens right now 
is 5,300 Upix, okay? If you are in Queens right now, you can mint properties cheaper than 5,300 Upix. And I haven't even like tested this beforehand. So this is this is me doing it live. I'm going to click on a non-FSA property and I guarantee you it's going to be less than 5,300. There you go. 5,000. That's like, you know, 8% cheaper than the floor. You can mint that right now. No FSA requirement. If you are FSA, you're doing even better. Look at this one. 3,700. If you're FSA, you should be minting the f as many of these cheap properties as you can. If you're not FSA, you should be minting as many of these cheap properties as you can. Because one, you're basically making an instant return because the floor is higher than what you can mint them for. And two, the sale floor is ridiculously low. Like even though this 5,300 is still more than the minting floor, that 5,300 to me is like destined to increase over time. Don't forget, before Queens came out, Brooklyn was at 12k, Bronx was at like 14k, Staten Island's at like 12k. That was stable for a long time. I see, and look at the map, right? As far as I'm concerned, and as far as most other players are concerned, you've got Manhattan, and then you've got the surrounding boroughs. These surrounding boroughs, given enough time, they're going to pretty much even out over time in terms of price. Why would I pay 12000 for property in Brooklyn when I could buy it for like 6000 in Queens? It doesn't make any sense. So people are going to just be focusing on minting and buying in Queens, and then the price in Queens is going to go up and up and up and up. It's going to hit about 10 k 11 k and then they're all going to be kind of part of this New York ecosystem right? Queens might always be slightly cheaper than Brooklyn or Bronx, just because there's more properties there. I get it. But on a broad scale, I think you can expect the prices to uh, equalize. So if you've got money to spare, 5000 is too cheap for Queens. I was saying it back when Chicago came out. I was like, look at this like 4k floor. This is too cheap. You should be minting the 4k properties in Chicago. And if you listened to me back then, you'd be laughing now. So listen to me now, you'll be laughing in a few months. And that's really all the feedback I had to share. Um, let me know how you did in Queens. Uh, best of luck with the collections. I want to end this video by giving a shout out to my director and executive level sponsors, to Shah Singh, Bad Frog, Matringo and Monopoly Mike. Thank you so, so much for your continued support of the channel. Everybody have a fantastic weekend and I'll see you in the next one.